Hello, and welcome back to my humble show. I am your host for tonight and every other night, the Articulate Thinker. Hopefully, here to bring you art articles and articulation straight from articulation stations. So be sure to like, subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Don't forget to turn on those bell notifications while you're at it. If you like it, put a ring on it. Sharing is caring. All that other good stuff, as per usual. My apologies if I sound extra raspy. My throat is a bit sore. And I have a bit of a headache as well. So that is just swell. Also, I have an issue with my jaw. Which has decided to come back. As a matter of fact. It was bothering me for at least a couple of months. Back several months ago. But yeah, several months have gone by since it's bothered me. And surprise, surprise, it's back. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be a thing of the past once again. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how this goes. This show about LaFonza Butler, who has been named to replace Dianne Feinstein in the Senate. Uh, named by Gavin Newsom, of course. So I'll be covering all of that. That's news from Sunday. And yes, I do hope you had a great weekend. I hope you're you're having yourself a great week. Um, as of now, hmm. if I end up waking up sick tomorrow, I will not be making it to work, but I have plenty of sick time because I, I don't get sick all that often, or at least I haven't, uh, I did have COVID, uh, a few months back, right when I went on a trip with my wife to see my family for the first time in several years. Yeah, we both got COVID on that trip. That was no fun. But that's besides the point. <sighs> what is my point? Oh yes, let's cover some news. Here are some headlines from the last 24 hours. Most of them from just a few hours ago. From Politico, Gavin Newsom picks LaFonza Butler as Dianne Feinstein replacement. From NBC News, Governor Gavin Newsom chooses LaFonza Butler to fill Dianne Feinstein's Senate seat. From Fox News, Newsom names LaFonza Butler, former Kamala Harris advisor, to fill Feinstein's vacant Senate seat. And we have CNN jumping in, New York Times, Associated Press, so on and so forth. You get the point. You get the picture. I am surprised that my, my computer is not freezing up right now. It has been terrible. Just terrible. But yeah, after a day of working on the issues, trying to work out the issues, I seem to have at least some of them worked out. Although I did have to restart my computer just before I started recording this on account of the freezing. Hmm. Enough about me. Let's talk some more about LaFonza Butler. So this was a statement on the www.gov.ca.gov website, Office of Governor Gavin Newsom here. This is what they had to say about it. Governor Gavin Newsom appoints LaFonza Butler to complete a Senator Feinstein's term in the U.S. Senate, I believe, that term ends next year. But of course, Diane Feinstein came up short. She passed away just last week at 90 years of age. And I uh, I talked about that already, so I'm not going to be talking about that. As for this, a trusted advisor to Vice President Harris and leader of the nation's largest organization dedicated to electing women, Butler will make history as California's first openly LGBTQ United States Senator and the first black lesbian to openly serve in Congress in American history. Go figure. So, this is to be expected. I believe Gavin Newsom had previously said that he would appoint a black woman if given the opportunity, but he went above and beyond appointing the first openly LGBTQ United States Senator. First black lesbian in other words interesting how um 
a woman who represents one of those digits, the L, um, as in lesbian, is listed as a representative of LGBTQ as all... All those things are the same, apparently, these days. It's all part of the spectrum of uh, pandering and identity politics. You know the drill. Hmm. Governor Gavin Newsom today announced the selection of LaFonza Butler, the president of the United States' largest organization dedicated to electing women, Emily's List. Hmm. To complete the United States Senate term of the late Senator Dianne Feinstein, which runs through 2024, like I said, Butler, a longtime senior advisor to Vice President Kamala Harris, labor leader and advocate for women and working people, will be the first openly LGBTQ person to represent California in the Senate. She will also be the first black lesbian to openly serve in Congress in American history, and the second black woman to represent California in the Senate following Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm not really surprised that they would pick someone who is in cahoots with Kooky Kamala, uh, since Kamala Harris is from that state uh, once again, but it appears that someone isn't technically from the state of California, and that someone is Lofonza Butler. So that's that's been taking up a lot of the the headlines. Well, maybe not the headlines, but the the uh, posts, the captions on social media, such as X. A lot of people pointing out that Lafonza Butler has actually been in Maryland and is now changing her residence in order to fit the description and hold the position. So, in other words, Gavin Newsom had to look outside of California just to find someone to represent California. I mean, I assume he had a few options in mind, but, you know, word it how you would like. That's the truth of the matter. He settled with someone on the outside who is pretending not to be. But she she uh, pushes all the right boundaries. She checks all the right boxes. She being LaFonza Butler, of course. An advocate for women and girls. Uh, only after they've been born, of course. A second generation fighter for working people and a trusted advisor to Vice President Harris. LaFonza Butler represents the best of California and she'll represent us proudly in the United States Senate, said Governor Newsom. As we mourn the enormous loss of Senator Feinstein, the very freedoms she fought for, reproductive freedom, Equal protection and safety from gun violence have never been under greater assault. LaFonza will carry the baton left by Senator Feinstein, continue to break glass ceilings because those are the easiest ones to break, <laughs> and fight for all Californians in Washington, D.C., or at least the most liberal and leftist among them. Unless they're, I don't know, homeless on the streets or something. One of the many crises in California. <sighs> Butler comes from a working class family. Her father, a small business owner, was diagnosed with a terminal illness and died when Butler was 16 years old. Her mother was the household sole provider, working as a classroom aide, a home care provider, a security guard, and a bookkeeper to provide for Butler and her two siblings. And, by the way, I'm not suggesting that because of her box checking, she is automatically unqualified, unqualified for the position. Though I would disagree with her on all of her personal positions, or at least most of them, her political positions, I should say. But that question is always going to be in everyone's mind when a previous promise has been made to name someone based upon their skin color and sex or unlimited spectrum of a gender yeah 
With her selection to the Senate, Butler will step down from her role as president of EMILY's List, where she was the first woman of color and mother to lead the organization prior to joining EMILY's List. Butler ran political campaigns and led strategy efforts for numerous companies, organizations, and elected leaders, including for Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Oh. And they list they list these individuals as uh, positive references, positive reinforcements. Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton. Hmm. That's supposed to make us more... Enthusiastic about LaFonza Butler? It's not working for me. Butler was a key leader of the Vice President Kamala Harris's presidential campaign. For more than a decade, she served as the president of the largest labor union in California, SEIU Local 2015, a union representative representing more than uh, 325,000 nursing home and home care workers throughout the state not a literal representative as as in uh representative of the house but uh you know someone who was representing and also i i should point out that yes as it said she has done her fair share of work in california so technically in that sense, she is from California, but as you will see momentarily, she has a lot of uh, a lot of paperwork to suggest that she is actually more recently from Maryland. Previously, Butler served as president of SEIU United Long Term Care Workers. Uh, ULTCW, and also as SEIU's Property Services Director, Division Director at least, in which she was responsible for the strategic direction of organizing on behalf of more than 250,000 janitors, security officers, window cleaners, and food service workers across the country. Butler also served as an SEIU International Vice President and President of the SEIU uh, California State Council. We're almost at the end of this. Then we can move on to bigger, better things. For example, posts upon X, aka Twitter. Butler was the former director of the Board of Governors of the Los Angeles branch of the Federal Reserve System. In 2018, she was appointed to the University of California Board of Regents by Governor Jerry Brown, where she served until 2021. She served in various other roles, including as a board member for the National Children's Defense Fund, Black PAC. Uh, we can assume that they are uh, very much supportive of BLM. In the Bay Area Economic Council Institute, and as a fellow for the MIT Community Innovators Lab, Butler was named a champion for change by President Barack Obama. Exciting stuff. So she's in cahoots with Kamala Harris, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. You name it, she's been a part of it. Butler received a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science from Jackson State University. Butler is married to her wife, Niniki. And together they have a daughter, Nyla. Safe to say they didn't have the daughter together. I'm not sure how they worked that out, but they are both women. And though some seem to be clueless on what a woman is these days. Well, safe to say they were not uh, reproducing a child together. Notice it, it never says anything about where she was currently living at the time of the appointment, if you will. So other people are going to make all the points necessary about that. Matthew Foldy here on X, a.k.a. Twitter, had plenty to say about it. He said, California's newest senator, LaFonza Butler, literally lives in Maryland and registered to vote here last year. 
voter name, Lafonza Butler, and the specific address is blocked off there, but Silver Spring, Maryland, as you can see. Mailing address, same as residential, party affiliation, Democratic, you think. And there's the registration date. The end of last year. Uh, just over a year ago. And here's more from, from Matthew. Emily's list literally says that new... Um, California Senator LaFonza Butler lives in Maryland. And there are screenshots here. But there's no need for me to pull that up because you'll see it for yourself momentarily. <sighs> he has an extensive thread here. But I think I have it. I think I have it pulled up elsewhere. Yes, I do. I have this pulled up. Her donating contributions totaling 1500 Industry pro-choice abortion rights. Employer, Emily's List. Location, Silver Springs, Maryland. She is a donor. VPAP.org. Just more information uh, showing that she is indeed from Maryland. Despite being chosen for a job in California. But hey, she can move just like anyone else. And lo and behold, history being rewritten in real time. Emily's List now removed how Marylander turned California Senator LaFonza Butler is a Marylander. So yeah, this is this is true. And I'll I'll show you a more vivid version of this screenshot. This is a screenshot, technically two different screenshots. From the Emily's List webpage, website, her senior leadership team bio before the announcement or before the change of her location to after. Yeah. Down here at the bottom is the updated version of her bio. All right. We'll get there. Matthew adds here, on LinkedIn, the next uh, California Senator LaFonza Butler lists her location as S Silver Spring, Maryland. Did Gavin Newsom really mess up so badly? Well, she has lived. She has lived in California and done a lot of work in California. But still, it is unfortunate that they they seemingly are pretending that she isn't, at least more recently, from Maryland. They're trying to cover her tracks. So it seems. And I could be wrong. Maybe it's all unintentional covering of tracks. But it seems to be a covering of tracks, nevertheless. So, yeah. LinkedIn. Even on LinkedIn, she was listed as being from Silver Spring, Maryland. And look at this. New California Center lists her location as Maryland. So this was supposedly on her X account. Her Twitter account. Location, Maryland. But I can't actually see that now. I'll show you that as well. Because everything is changing. Everyone is changing everything. Or at least that one thing. That one particular detail about the location. Location, location, location. All right, so look at this. This is Emily's list. And I'll pull up I'll pull up her uh, bio here. On the senior leadership team. Emily's list dot O-R-G. And you can see for yourself. Down at the bottom of her bio, where her location was initially listed, it has been edited, it has been updated, and that detail is missing. Last line reads, LaFonza grew up in Magnolia, 
MS Mississippi and attended one of the country's premier HBCUs, Jackson State University. Black everything. All black everything. Let me go back to this. And this is a screenshot from before the change. When it said, right here at the end, the same line I just read. Lafonza grew up in Magnolia, MS, Mississippi, and attended one of the country's premier HBCUs, Jackson State University. She lives in Maryland with her partner, Niniki Lee, and their daughter, Nyla. So that right there is now missing. Because even her website, which she has been a president of, is covering her tracks. I don't know. I'm using that term loosely. I don't know that they would pretend if asked that she hadn't been living in Maryland. But it's one of those things that people like to point out. People like to call out. Pretend that they're exposing something. I get it. I mean, I'm doing it right now. I think it's interesting. When I feel like people are misleading me, I want to report on that. Let me just go ahead and read this bio. Alfonso Butler is the president of the Emily's List. As a leader in the Democratic politics or in democratic politics campaign strategy and labor movement for two decades she has dedicated her life to empowering women and supporting them and finding their voice and using it to make meaningful change eh, or shall they say uh, meaningful abortions <clears throat> that's really what they're fighting for if you want to call an abortion meaningful uh, priority, or prior to joining Emily's List, Butler served as Director of Public Policy and Campaigns in North America for Airbnb. She also was a partner at SCRB Strategies, a political consulting firm where she was str strategist for candidates running up and down the ballot, and a senior advisor to Vice President Kamala Harris's presidential campaign. With nearly 20 years in the labor movement, Butler has served as the president of the biggest union in California. Blah, 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 blah. Things which she has been an advocate for are listed here. But no surprises. So I can skip the rest of this. I mainly wanted to show you that last line there that has now been changed. But the line before that even says here, she has been a member of the University of California Board of Regents and member of the Board of Directors for the Children Defense Fund and Black Pack. I'm saying it boldly because it's bold print, capitalized. Black Pack. That's how I read that. When people type in all caps, you have to read it like that. Yeah. So Emily's Lee's list right here for you. This is interesting. Hmm. Emily's list dot org run win change the world. But connected to this is run win change the world. Dot .org and i have that website pulled up on my laptop over here and let me just show you to the best of my ability what i'm looking at over here on my laptop screen this is run when change the world.org um 2022 has challenged us. Emily's list elects the women who fight back for abortion access, for voting rights, for our democracy. My body, my choice up here at the top, it says. So I'm just, I'm just making a note of this because over here on the main Emily's list website, they have this picture of a young girl. And then on their connected Run Win Change the World website, 
they have this very obvious celebration of abortion going on. A world in which little girls like this do not even make it past. Uh, well, birth. I find that more sad than amusing, but this is the upside-down world we're living in. Advocates are advocating for all the wrong things. Why not advocate for life? That's an option. That's a choice. Alright, so... This point is made yet again by Ashley Zavala this time. A California Capital correspondent. Uh, she points out the the change to the Emily's List website. Here you see the last line. Before and the last line after here. Yeah. But I spent enough time on that already. So from Robbie Starbuck, he says, Her FEC filing 31 days ago lists Maryland as her residence, and yet Gavin Newsom is naming LaFonza Butler to be United States Senator, representing a state she doesn't even live in. However corrupt you think politics is, multiply it by one million. What do you think about that? you think that's fair to say? you think that all of this is a sign of corruption? I mean, it's questionable, at least. But is it outright corruption? Yeah. Here listed as her, her residence. Silver Spring, Maryland, on the FEC form. All right, so this point is made by, I mean, therefore I am. I've already pointed it out, but someone else pointing it out. Breaking. Governor Gavin Newsom will appoint Emily's List President LaFonza Butler to fill the seat of the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. Butler is the president of Emily's List, a national political organization that focuses on electing Democratic women who support abortion access. She has deep experience in Democratic politics, having previously served as president of a powerful labor union and as advisor to Kamala Harris's 2020 presidential campaign. And here's the screenshot with the location listed as Maryland, as you've already seen. And then if I pull up her account, her actual account, the location is no longer listed there. Hmm. So everyone is rewriting some history at this point. I wonder if she'll change it to California or if she'll just leave it blank. Regardless, here is a link to the website I had pulled up on my laptop. I've already pulled it up over here, actually runwindchangetheworld.org and as you can see they are very supportive of abortion more so than they are of of life I guess if that makes any sense I mean I feel like your number one priority should be life I feel like Abortion should at least be second on the list, right? But they've made it their brand. This from Joey Manorino. Breaking news, Dianne Feinstein's replacement is announced. Gavin Newsom promised he would nominate a black woman to take over Dianne Feinstein's seat. Well, he went above and beyond. He found a black lesbian woman named LaFonza Butler. Extra woke points for the lesbianism. She checks every single box for the liberals except for the fact that she is not transgender. Give it time. Always could head in for some top surgery before she gets sworn in, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, something about this image feels photoshopped. But that's just... That's just a feeling. <laughs> yeah. Colin Harris and LaFonza Butler. Together they are. Tell me their girl band. Tell me their girl band name. 
Crying Shame, Cackler, and Crier. Crying Cackling Shame. Ben Shapiro said, Congrats to the state of Maryland on finally obtaining three senators. And he links an article from Associated Press. I don't know if I want to spend time reading articles. They're all just going to say the same thing, presumably. I might, might click around and find out a little bit more. Let's see. This from Libby Emmons. Breaking California... Governor Gavin Newsom picks pro-abortion activist LaFonza Butler as Dianne Feinstein's replacement in Senate. With a link to a post-millennial article. Their articles are often short. I might read that one. And this from Christopher Cadalego. Scoop. Governor Gavin Newsom will appoint Emily's list president... LaFonza Butler to fill the seat of late Senator Dianne Feinstein, elevating the head of a fundraising juggernaut that works to elect them women who support abortion rights per a person familiar. So that's a scoop from early on. I can go ahead and exit out of that tab. Let me click on this article from the Post Millennial, see if it has anything interesting to offer before I wrap this show up. Like I said, it's a short article. California Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom, who you see on the right. And I might use this as the thumbnail. Should I? Let me uh, pause right here, just in case. Alright, so I might use that for a thumbnail. As for the rest of this article, yes. California Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom has chosen LaFonza Butler, the president of Emily's List, a pro-abortion organization, to fill the vacancy left by the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. This move is expected to raise Butler's profile significantly, given her advocacy for pro-abortion Democratic women. Governor Newsom's swift decision to select the next senator comes just two days after Senator Feinstein's past and as a new Congress just avoided a government shutdown. In the closely divided Senate, each vote holds paramount importance for Senate Democrats. The formal announcement of this appointment will be made Monday. Anthony York, an advisor to the governor, informed Politico that Newsom's appointment comes without any stipulations or conditions concerning the 2024 election. Consequently, Butler has the opportunity to enter the competitive field of Democratic candidates vying to succeed Feinstein. This election landscape now includes special uh, elections, the March primary, and the November runoff. So we might see more of her in the future as well, if she decides to stick around. Newsom's selection of LaFonza Butler for this position carries significant implications within California's political sphere, occurring in the wake of Senator Feinstein's passing. Of note, Butler is presently a registered voter in Maryland, but she reportedly intends to change her registration to California. I mean, she would have to. Safe to say she won't mind moving. Taking one for the team. Governor Newsom encountered substantial pressure in the making of this decision after initially pledging to appoint a black woman to the vacant seat, uh, the Senate seat. Uh, similar to how uh, Joe Biden pledged to nominate a black woman for his vice president. Some potential candidates publicly declined interest while others privately expressed reservations about assuming a short-term appointment followed by a rapid transition into a five-month campaign. Butler had previously questioned the integrity of elections in a 2012 tweet. Now look at this. She had said, Voters, watch your ballots as you use the machines. Make sure it logs the vote for whom you choose. Mistakes are already reported. Vote 2012. One of her very own tweets, as pointed out by Jack 
Pasovic. Um, sorry, the the uh, technical difficulties are beginning again. And this browser keeps freezing. I'll be able to clear a lot of tabs after this show is over, though, so that's exciting. Hopefully that'll clear up some speed, some processing speed. I can only hope. I can only dream. Infamous state Senator Scott Weiner, who is known for posing in bondage gear and promoting child sex changes, praised the pick, tweeting, LaFonza Butler is an exceptionally talented leader and strong pick by Gavin Newsom. And given the tidal wave of vile hate being directed at LGBTQ people in this country, which is a bit exaggerated, sending a black lesbian to the United States Senate sends a deeply powerful message of inclusion. So that's what this is all about, sending a message. Yeah. DEI message. LaFonza Butler is an exceptionally talented leader and a strong pick by Gavin Newsom, says... Scott Weiner of all people. And uh, again, she may be qualified in, in today's standards, but still doesn't mean she's being picked for the right reason. And it doesn't mean I agree with her and her ideology either. Okay, I gotta wrap this up because the The freezing, the buffering is uh, beginning to get worse and worse and worse. Cursed, I tell you. On Sunday, Congressional Black Caucus Chair Stephen Horsford urged Newsom to appoint Representative Barbara Lee, a Senate candidate who had been recently ruled out by the governor due to concerns about providing a political advantage. Yeah, you gotta have that political advantage. You gotta have an advantage, a leverage, or something. Okay. That's it for that that's it for me. That man. Things were going so well until they weren't. Can you see me? I'm looking at my uh top screen up here. My OBS software. I keep uh freezing up on it. Oh well. Gotta go. Keep in touch, keep in tune. New content is coming soon. Peace.